here we are finally in the friendly arm in just look around a little bit this will be the last video of mine that has uh, rendering errors I finally sorted out how what was upsetting for apps so badly about this game now the first thing that we're gonna do is walk over here to the right because probably the most helpful hidden item in the game is right over here and since I'm planning on using the new NPCs uh, I'm gonna go ahead and abuse these uh, hidden items as you can see it gives us some extra spell slots just two at the uh, first level and we'll head on in to the friendly arm in and I'll show some neat little conversation pieces and other things that happen along the way there. That's the new resting screen. And uh, it also upset the fraps quite deeply. And you talk to this guy and he basically tells you that there are some rules in the friendly arm in, but they're pretty much just common sense. It's really kind of difficult to get yourself in trouble here just by minding your own business. If you're a more violence prone type, you may get yourself kicked out. Uh, or if you try and thieve from the in rooms, that can be a little testy sometimes. But there's the giant old inn, which it used to be a castle. Uh, the story goes back that the owners of the inn uh, liberated it from some evil guy that used to live there. What brings you to the friendly arm? I'm not your friend. How rude. And he attacks us. So we're going to go ahead and... Basically, the easiest way... This fight can be very difficult. Unless you bombard this guy with really early damage. Which is what we do. And he goes down. He's got some spell scrolls, some gold, and a letter. Be it known to all of evil intent that a bounty has been placed on the head of Sanarbu, the foster child of Garayan, last seen in the area of Candlekeep, this person is to be killed in quick order. No less than 200 coins of gold. So, this over here is a temple to Garl Glitter Gold, who's Gond, I think. Garl Glitter Gond. I never, I've never really followed Faerun much. Garl Glitter Gold. So we're going to go ahead and identify some of these items. Uh, and generally carouse around, take care of my inventory. This black screen might last for a little bit. The, uh, the voices in this audio track made Fraps really mad. But as I said, this will be the last time that this sort of thing happens. <laughs> I have sorted out the problem. Unfortunately, I'd already cleared my uh, fraps folder. I'm really just working with my inventory right now, trying to get everything sorted. And now we'll go on into the friendly arm in. I'm gonna try and get it to say the iconic line. There we go. And we'll head on in now. Over there in the the upper right, I'll talk to him right now, is one of the new characters. He's a blackguard, from my understanding. But we can't get him right now. Goes by the name Ra uh, Ragefast, as we were kids. This is a pretty funny little line. He'd cast bark skin on us, so we'd wander around all brown skin and green haired and runny looking for a few hours. Funny looking, rather. There's Khalid and Jahira, the two that Garayan told us to get.
If he is fast, we share your grief. Blah, 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 blah. Companions should be your own choice. We could t travel. See, Khalid has a stutter. Uh, it would be a fitting last service to Grian. Your company would be welcome. So that g that makes six. Uh, so we'll have Zara, Mataran, Imo, and Khalid Jihara. Your basic starting party so for this game if you're not solo running it. Uh, you've got, you can rest here, you can buy different stuff, or you can sell different things. There's, there are a few things I'd like to pick up here. I just kind of look through and see what we've got and what the, uh, the different characters have on them. And in 2-2, they did a lot of really weird things to the weapon specializations of Khalid and Jahira and a couple of those types of characters. So I wanted to look through those and show that they were they were you know relatively okay. Uh, one thing that I have definitely noticed while we're browsing through inventory here is that at the start of the game, because of some of the extra items that are in existence, I seem to have a lot more gold at the start than I recall uh, having available to me in the past. That could be partly due to the due to just getting lucky, but there were the two extra guys in the Garion fight and etc etc blah blah blah. And basically just get these guys equipped with different little goodies, mostly better armor. Uh we're not gonna my plan for them is not to keep Jahira very long at all. Because I'm a cleric, and she's not a particularly good healer type person. Uh, or definitely not as good as me. So, we'll be dropping her rather quickly. We're probably going to drop Zarn Montaron right now. Uh, because as I understand it, there will be a new character coming shortly. Uh, that's not the one that we just talked to. You can't get him supposedly until after you've already done Nashgal. Uh, and, you know, Khalid and Jahira are the first ones to tell us about that place. So, that'll be a little bit. Uh, so we'll probably pick up a Jauntus just for an, um, a melee fighter to help Khalid. I try to keep every character with at least one healing potion. Uh, and then we just head on up the stairs here. I'll talk to a couple people because there are some funny things that get said. This guy right here complains that the there's an iron shortage going on. And he says that his tanker just spills everywhere and his fork always bends. And it's n that the iron shortage has no mercy on drunkards. Uh, you can walk around in here and explore and get some different rooms. Uh, different kinds of loot but I'm not really gonna mess with that if you talk to, to this guy here he tells you there are some spiders in his house he needs taken care of if you bring him back the items if you have a high charisma score he'll give you antidote potions too this guy's under the impression that you're the staff so he gives you some pants very famous pants and uh, I will go ahead and read the description of said pants as soon as I can get an identify scroll onto the aforementioned pants. The Golden Pantaloons. The Golden Pantaloons did surely see the very beginnings of the realm, though I must press that they saw this far more this formative time by their simple blah blah blah, leave basic pantaloons of an age long since out of front speak of trousers that were as metal though soft about the shanks. Well, it might be easy to jump to the seemingly inevitable conclusion that the tri blah 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 nickel panties are also said to be cu currently available, though the dockside establishments that claim to offer these products are beyond my meager experience, and thus I can make no report. The purpose of the pantaloons is as mysterious as ever, and will likely remain so until the pentacrator himself returns, though some properties can be divined through intimate observation the uplifting properties of the gusset very nearly defy gravity shaping quite nicely both the front and the rear 
would likely increase self-esteem for a wearer of either sex, blah, blah, blah. So the golden pantaloons are, are a pretty famous item uh, that occur in Baldur's Gate. And if you keep, you can't wear them, but if you keep them on you all the way to Baldur's Gate, there's actually a guy you meet that will attempt to steal your golden pantaloons. So that's pretty funny that they they tied that all through. I'll maybe keep them around and show that because I don't think you can sell them for anything. So now that's basically all there is to the the friendly arm in. There's a little bit more we can do, so we're gonna show that off. Uh. Also, I, I should point out that I'm not grinding in this game. So, you can walk around in forest areas killing stuff for XP. But I've never really liked doing that. And it's not particularly useful in this game. So, another thing. In the past, when you got pairs, so like Khalid and Jahira or Montaron and Zar. You could lock a half of the pair in a root in a house by just having them enter the house and then remove them from party. You can't do that anymore because the NPCs can exit and enter buildings on their own. So I'm going to try and reduce the amount of members in our party without actually getting rid of all of them. And there are some hobgoblins living around up here that might help us towards that end. So here we go. Epic battle with hobgoblins. Our first reasonably good fight. I want to try and keep Zar alive though. Because uh, he may be our only spellcaster for a while. Alright. So that was an easy fight. Nobody got hurt. Take some bastard swords. Some helmets. You never know when you might need helmets. Gotta prevent those critical hits to the head. Cause they'll mess you up. Put a helmet on him too while we're at it. And another thing I've noticed about this enhanced edition is that they've uh, they've added back in some of the voice lines that were cut from the original. You'll hear Khalid say one here towards the end. And so I may vary up, mix up who's my party leader just to see. And Imowen has said a couple things uh, while playing that I've never heard before. And I usually just keep Imowen in the party. So I've, I've heard hundreds of hours of her. Now we're going to have Montaron fight all of these hobgoblins by himself. He'll either prove his worth as a halfling fighter thief or die trying. A 3v1 fight. His first one, he annihilates that hobgoblin and that hobgoblin. And now we just watch the swinging back and forth. And he gets that one too, so insane difficulty. Too easy for Monteron. Just show off sort of what the loot is. One of these guys has a ring that we need to hold on to because of the quest item. Now because I chose a Priest of Helm, my reputation's a little bit lower than it would be if I had picked. So there he is. I've, I don't believe I've ever heard Khalid say that before. So, we're going to go up to the north here and grab Ajantis, the paladin. And I need to de-equip all the, all the people. I can, but try. And I'll do my best. there we go, because Zar and Montaron are going to leave us now. But that's alright. I understand that we'll be getting a mage soon, so... It's not the end of the world. Be you friend or... We're friends. Who are you? I'm Ajanta, squire paladin of the, or the Order of the Most Radiant Heart. We share a similar goal, blah, blah, blah. 
When I introduced myself, you perhaps heard that I referred to myself as a squire knight. Why not? Goodbye, people. You, you're letting me go, but we shared so much, so many good times. This is truly a sad day indeed. Goodbye, so sad, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to leave them stranded up there. And make a Jauntus party leader. Which will help us, because he, as a paladin, has high charisma score. Which will lower some of the prices uh, at the store. And really, that's more or less all there is for us to do. Uh, we're going to take that ring that we got and turn it in uh, down at the where the lady who needs it lives. And then that'll pretty much be it for us uh, in the Friendly Arm Inn until we go and whack those spiders that that gnome wanted us to go kill. Uh, I'll hide the, the screen just so we can enjoy the scenery a little bit. And here we go. Zoom in a little. And we'll go talk to the lady now. And that'll give us a reputation point, which will drop uh, prices at stores for us. You need to be kind of rough with her. She won't believe that you're strong enough to take out those hobgoblins. Thank you for the ring. We try to get into this chest, but there's no way for us to get in. Also, if your your reputation goes up, you hear that there's a new sound that plays. So that's kind of neat. We'll look around in here, and there's really no loot, and we can't force the lock open. So we're basically screwed. I don't really remember what's in that chest. So I'm just not going to mess with it. And now we are going to head south and go to Baragost, which is a sort of medium-sized city with a bit of things to do, but not really overwhelming. And now one thing to note is there used to be a cinema that played, or a cutscene that played when you entered Baragost, but it's not there anymore. And this guy just accosts you and tells you kind of the lays of the city. 